Okay, so John Dalton of Dalton's Tom Theory fame based his theory on two laws, the law of conservation of mass and the law of constant composition. First off, the law of conservation of mass states that matter is not created or destroyed in a closed system. That basically means that if we have a chemical reaction, the amount of each element must be the same in the starting substance, the reactants, and in the resulting substance or products. So we use the law of conservation of mass every time we balance chemical equations. Secondly, the law of constant composition states that a compound will always have the same proportion or ratio of the same elements by mass. So Dalton's theory comes in five parts, depending on what book you've read. Number one, all matter is made of atoms and atoms are indivisible and indestructible. But atoms can be further divided into smaller particles, which we now call subatomic particles, such as electrons, protons, neutrons, etc, etc. Number two, all of the atoms of a particular element are identical and are different from those of different elements. But the atoms of the same element may vary in the amount of neutrons in their nucleus, therefore in the atomic mass, so not identical. Number three, atoms cannot be created or destroyed. This is where it gets a little bit hazy. Atoms can be destroyed and created in the sense that they can change, for example, during radioactive decay. There are two types of radioactive decay, alpha and beta. Alpha decay is where a helium nucleus is chucked out of an atom that is decaying. The helium nucleus is also known as an alpha particle. Where a helium nucleus is emitted from an atom, the atom has lost two protons and two neutrons. So the element has changed. Overall, this means that the atomic mass decreases by four and the atomic number decreases by two. A new element is formed and that is two places lower in the periodic table than in the original element. For example, uranium-235, an isotope of uranium, has 92 protons and 143 neutrons and is radioactive, emitting an alpha particle. As it emits its alpha particle, it becomes a different element. It changes to thorium-231, which has 90 protons and 141 neutrons. So again, the atom has lost two protons and two neutrons and has changed into an element that is two places lower in the periodic table. So uranium-235 is destroyed and thorium-231 is created. I've gotten my little um, whiteboard for this. Another quick example of radioactive decay is um, when radon decays into polonium when it emits an alpha particle. So, so because radon has decayed into polonium, its mass number has changed from 219 to 215, its atomic number has decreased from 86 to 84, as you know if you know the periodic table. And also, it has also emitted a helium atom, or a, what did I call it? An alpha particle, jeez. An alpha particle, and it's four, because it's changed by four, and two. Two, beautiful, beautiful. Anyways, there are two types of beta decay, beta negative and beta positive. Beta negative is where a neutron changes into a proton plus an electron. The proton stays in the nucleus and the electron leaves the atom at high energy, which we call a beta particle. When a beta particle is emitted from the nucleus, the nucleus has one more proton and one less neutron. This means that the atomic mass remains unchanged and the atomic number increases by one. So a new element is formed that is one place higher in the periodic table than the original element. As an example, carbon-14 is a radioactive isotope of carbon. It's got eight neutrons instead of the usual six, carbon-14 through beta decay can turn into nitrogen, which we're gonna show you on my little whiteboard over here. So, this is um, what we called beta negative decay, and even though you know beta negativo. So we've got carbon, we've got its mass number 14, the mass number does not change in beta negative decay, um, but the atomic number does, it increases by one, so carbon turns into nitrogen, and this is the beautiful beta particle that gets out of the nucleus when this happens, when beta negative decay occurs, this gets chucked out, hence the new spank and brand new nitrogen we got. And unlike beta negative decay, which occurs when radioisotopes are unstable, in the way that they have too many neutrons, beta positive decay occurs when they have too many protons. In this case, a proton is converted into a neutron and a positive beta particle 
This is called a positron and has the same mass as an electron but the opposite charge, so positive. The atomic mass remains the same but the atomic number decreases by one. And if you remember, the atomic number increases by one in beta negative decay. So technically, a new atom can be created but only through change. So far, no one has made one from nothing unless you count antimatter that is produced in particle accelerators, which I don't. Okay, okay, we've gotten to the <sighs> number four. In chemical reactions, atoms combine with or separate from other atoms. Okay, he was right in saying that during a chemical reaction, atoms are merely rearranged. Okay. And then we got number five. In chemical reactions, atoms combine with each other in simple whole number ratios to form combined atoms. Okay. He was right again in saying that a given compound always, compound always has atoms present in the same relative numbers. Dalton's atomic theory wasn't entirely correct, but to be fair to the guy, he had, he had a lot right. 